ancient text that gives a different story of creation. There is a forbidden book, lost for centuries, that includes fallen angels, bloodthirsty giants, and a warning to all humanity. It is an ancient writing filled with divine secrets, dreams, and visions. A tour of heaven and hell, guided by the angel Uriel. The Book of Enoch is named for the man who the Holy Bible says walked with God. Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him. The Book of Enoch is named for a man who's mentioned in one sentence in the Book of Genesis. We only know one sentence worth of information about him. And yet, somebody stopped, paused on that name, and thought, hmm, Enoch, if he was taken up into heaven, what might he have seen? It is a daunting manuscript, five volumes containing 108 chapters. For many ancient Christians, the book of Enoch was essential. Yet it was banned from the Christian Bible. We don't know why this literature was ultimately excluded from the canon. Um, perhaps it's because of its description of the fall of the rebel angels and their mating with mortals. Perhaps its understanding of uh, the end of time fell out of favor with Jews and Christians. The Book of Enoch begins with a warning to all humanity that a divine judgment has been rendered and a sentence will be imposed. God tells Enoch that all life on earth will be destroyed in a violent flood. And, as with the story in Genesis, God blames this evil on the sons of God, angels who lusted after the daughters of men. These angels are sometimes referred to as watchers. They keep constant watch. And they decide one day, about 200 of them, that they're going to descend to the earth. They would like to very much make contact with these mortal women. The Book of Enoch may have been an attempt to expand on the mysterious giants, the sons of God, and the daughters of the earth, spoken of in Genesis. Anytime you read the Book of Genesis, there are all kinds of unanswered questions. Suddenly, there is this quick few verses at the beginning of the flood story about giants in the land that come from the sons of God mixing with the daughters of the earth. And you stop and think, wait a minute, what's this all about? It's like it went by too fast, and you want to grab it and say, wait a minute, what was this? The Book of Enoch offers a disturbing vision of the fall of the angels who lust after earthly women. And they began to go into them and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms and enchantments. And they became pregnant, and they bare great giants whose height was three thousand ells. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. that these angels have crossed over this boundary that they shouldn't have. They were spiritual beings and they were to remain as such when they decided to descend upon earth. This unleashed upon the earth all sorts of problems. Not only these giants who are bloodthirsty and violent, but also these angels went on to teach humankind a variety of forbidden crafts. They also taught human beings how to make weapons of war. Now the good angels, the ones not tempted by these beautiful women, go to God and say, you know, there's a lot of bloodshed caused by these bad angels. At which point God says, we need to bind Azael, the sort of lead fallen angel, to bind him and to then cast him into a pit. We might think of this as how do we take care of nuclear waste in the 21st century? You take it out to a part of the world where no one lives and you bury it as deep as you can. For this community, the angel was like that sort of nuclear waste. Dangerous, volatile. After the rebel angels are cast into the depths of the earth, Enoch has a dream vision. The lead angel, Azazel, begs Enoch to plead their case before God, to petition the Almighty to release them from the depths of the earth. The request for clemency is denied. This version of the fall of the angels was very popular in its day and maintained popularity for centuries to come. When we look at Dante's work on the Inferno, it's largely out of the material in, in Enoch. 
when we look at various snips of the New Testament, Enoch seems to be in play. In Corinthians, when Paul talks about women covering their hair so the angels won't be seduced and tempted, it goes back to the fallen angels' tradition. Another episode tells of Uriel, a powerful angel in charge of the stars, who becomes Enoch's guide through the heavenly realms. Uriel's name, in fact, means God is my light. And whenever he is described uh, frequently in relation to God, he is situated to the east of God's throne. This is very interesting, of course, the sun rises to the east. So this gets us thinking, Uriel, a figure associated with light, perhaps uh, associated in some way with the sun or the stars or the idea of these heavenly bodies uh, making their rotations daily. And all these Uriel the holy angel who is the leader of them all showed to me and their positions and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And so something is going on here with the stars. It may well be going back to the role of astrology and the study of stars in the Persian Empire that is now giving rise to this new awareness that constellations aren't just constellations of stars, they're constellations of power. And through this tour of heaven, Enoch gets the information and he knows where the powers are and to know where the powers are means that you have access to the power. With its lush descriptions of heavenly powers and the horrors that await evildoers, even angels, Enoch was one of the most popular books among the early Christians. We know that some early Christians considered the writings of Enoch to be authoritative, to contain actual revelation from God. So because some people thought that, some influential people thought that, uh, the book was used as you would use uh, other books of the Bible. After all, Revelation appears in the New Testament. But Enoch, for reasons that I think are fairly clear, was just considered a little too strange, a little too suspicious, a little too creative, uh, perhaps, for the tradition. Having said that, there's no doubt that it was widely read and very popular. Yet the Book of Enoch was denied a home in the official Christian canon. This imaginative tale fell into obscurity until the late 18th century, when a Scottish explorer named James Bruce came upon this mysterious text in Oxum, a city in the Ethiopian highlands. Travelers to Ethiopia found manuscripts of these books and brought them back to Europe. This caused quite a sensation. I'm aware of scholarly reaction to them. People were excited about having these texts that were that we knew about only through allusion uh, before this time or a brief quotation. Whether this raised any questions in people's minds, canonical questions, should we put these books in the Bible? I'm not aware of really intense discussions of, of that sort. Until the mid-20th century, the Book of Enoch was assumed to be of interest only to the very early Christians. We now know that Enoch was sacred to Ethiopian Christians all along. Part of the reason why this probably became part of their canon is because of the mythic story of the foundation of the Ethiopian monarchy. You have Sheba who goes to see King Solomon, and the story goes that not only does she bring gifts, she brings some, a little bit of something back home. She's pregnant with Solomon's son. That son is Menelik. Menelik is the first dynastic king of Ethiopia. He actually goes back and retrieves the Ark of the Covenant from Solomon because Solomon is not taking care of the kingdom properly. And the Ark rests reportedly in Aksum, in Ethiopia. So when Christianity comes later, in about the fourth century to Ethiopia, there's already a story there. There's already a connection to the Old Testament story. So the Book of Enoch and all these other types of books that are included within the Ethiopian canon become part and parcel of putting together this Old Testament story, this Old Testament link, with a very new Christianity that enters into the Ethiopian. They don't give up the old. They put it all together with the new and blend it together. Large portions of the Book of Enoch also were found among the Essene literature, hidden in the caves of Qumran, as part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. What about when Joshua and the nation of Israel entered the land of Canaan? They were instructed to wipe out every man, woman, and child of certain tribes. I've talked to some people whose entire rejection of the Bible and God rests on this portion of the biblical text. This video is for those people. What no one ever mentions when recounting this issue is that according to the story itself, 
The tribes that they killed were non-human hybrids called the Nephilim, and they were huge. They had iron beds 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. It says that the Israelites were like grasshoppers in the sight of the Canaanites. These Nephilim were the offspring of very evil spiritual beings, and they were apparently the primary reason God sent the flood. Satan knew of the prophecies of one that would come to defeat him, and before any of the prophets came to expand on how this was to occur, all he knew at that point was that the Messiah would be a human. The Nephilim were an attempt to infiltrate the entire bloodline of humanity so that the Messiah could not be a full-blooded man, and if it weren't for Noah and his family, it would have worked. Then when Abraham found out from God that the land of Canaan was to be given to Abraham, Satan also found out, and he had over 400 years to plant this minefield of Nephilim in the land of Canaan in an attempt to thwart the plan of God. Genesis 6-4 tells us that the Nephilim were also on the earth after the flood, and it is them who Joshua was told to wipe out. Tribes such as the Rephaim, the Emim, the Horam, the Zamzumim were all giants. The kingdom of Og was the land of the giants. Later, we also find Arba and Anak and his seven sons, the Anakim, also giants, along with the famed Goliath and his four brothers. Now, if you want to say, well, God should have let the 13-foot-tall evil hybrids bend on the destruction of humanity for the purpose of wiping out any chance for the redemption of man go, then you're free to think what you want. But please remember, this is according to the biblical narrative itself, which is where the accusations come from in the first place. The point is that if you're going to claim that you know that God is a tyrant because of this portion of the Bible and you didn't know the rest of the story, just think about how many other issues there are in regard to the Bible where you might have mis- Jubilees is not the only ancient text that gives a different story of creation. There is a forbidden book, lost for centuries, that includes fallen angels, bloodthirsty giants, and a warning to all humanity. It is an ancient writing filled with divine secrets, dreams, and visions. A tour of heaven and hell guided by the angel Uriel. The book of Enoch is named for the man who the Holy Bible says walked with God. Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then he was no more because God took him. The book of Enoch is named for a man who's mentioned in one sentence in the book of Genesis. We only know one sentence worth of information about him. And yet, somebody stopped, paused on that name, and thought, hmm, Enoch, if he was taken up into heaven, what might he have seen? It is a daunting manuscript, five volumes containing 108 chapters. For many ancient Christians, the book of Enoch was essential. Yet it was banned from the Christian Bible. We don't know why this literature was ultimately excluded from the canon. Um, perhaps it's because of its description of the fall of the rebel angels and their mating with mortals. Perhaps its understanding of uh, the end of time fell out of favor with Jews and Christians. The Book of Enoch.